302 engine build is finally making progress for the first time in years. And, uh, well, we still got a long way to go. So lately, we've been doing literally nothing but carburetor stuff. Our XMC JB Weld flow, te flow bench test mule. You know, you know, if you haven't seen it, the past couple videos we've been doing, right? But that's off. It's shipped off to Joseph Nowak, where he'll do flow bench testing on it, see what we accomplished, and we'll get test results for that sometime in the future. So that's going to be awesome. But in the meantime, I need something else to do. And, uh, well, this thing's been occupying my living room for the past two years. And, uh... The Iron Horse currently has zero engine in it, and we need an engine to put in it because it is spring outside, as you can tell by looking at it. I mean, just take a look at all that spring e ness outside. So by golly, I, we, we gotta get that Mustang up and running, right? So that means we have to actually complete this thing, which has been a nightmare for multiple reasons. We'll go over them. Uh, and it's hit yet another snag, which we'll go over, but let's just bring you up to date with what we got. Sitting before us is our standard bore 30250 roller block, right? And it's no longer a bare block. You see that? This thing has been sitting empty for better part of over a year now. We are actually getting somewhere. I got the crankshaft in. It's our N41 Anderson camshaft. Okay, we got the crankshaft in. That's just the normal standard crank. There's that stroker crankshaft right there that I can't get pistons for, which would have been really awesome to do. Well, standard, you know, three, 302. It's still, still a 302. Carburetors, not, not important. Pistons are important. These are our standard bore, uh, factory forged pistons that we were planning on using for this block planning on using there <sighs> yeah no it, it, this it, this thing has had the same old story for literal years now but not not getting into that quite yet let's flip her over and take a look at the underside bam the underside what do we got we got our mesh uh, windage tray. I chose mesh instead of the solid windage tray because I don't know. I just feel like the mesh is going to work better. What? Why? I, I mean, I, I don't know. Look at it, right? Intuition. I, I, I have no reasonable answers. And we have our crank scraper, which is all just mocked up here because obviously no pistons so all this has to come back off anyway but it was just mocked up to see what our clearances are like and our windage tray perfect our crank scraper well i mean could 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 be better not uh not gonna sugarcoat it it it's miles away from the crank and uh well not doing a goddamn thing really so i don't know how much meat i have here but potentially i can waller out these out here to scooch it closer i mean this one's just terrible i, I can fit my whole finger in there um other ones are a bit closer that guy's a bit closer over here well we have a template we might uh we might just end up making our own. This was cheap. This came with the windage tray, so I mean it just it came with it, right? I I didn't fork over any extra pennies for this little sheet of aluminum. Fairly easily duplicated and uh well that might be the route we go, because I realistically we want this thing right up against that crankshaft. Cause Otherwise, it's, I mean, it's not really scraping the oil off it, is it? It's not doing a whole heck of a lot. But, th there we go. All, you know, that that's, we're up to speed now.
I mean, I guess it does get closer here. It gets way far away. And then close again. Well, yeah, that's that's not going to work like at all. <laughs> so we might just call her good then because, uh, I mean, we might scooch it just to mate up against there. But, uh, yeah, we, we ain't going to be able to do nothing about this. So, eh, whatever. It's in there. It's... It's either doing something or nothing, and it doesn't really matter which one it does at this point. So that's what we got so far, right? I mean, it's all torqued down, right? It, it's in there permanently. Uh, so, yeah. What else do we have yet to do? Uh, that's where things get tricky. Well, one thing we have still to do is on our pistons, we have to gap the piston rings. Yes, to, you know... Because we're running nitrous, we got to open up the piston ring gap and install them on our pistons. Well, that's where I ran into the first snag. Being that the piston rings I have, and the, the pistons and the rings were both donated by uh, Nick McMahon. So, again, appreciate that, man. It's been quite a while, so, you know, since I, I haven't used the, your generous donations yet, but I, I'm, I'm attempting to, right? But I got these rings, and they're the standard uh, 560 force, you know, 560 force, and uh, then the oil ring. Um, interestingly, though, and I did not know this until, you know, I started looking at it, those forged pistons, they have a smaller ring pack. They are a 160. 1 16th, 1 16th ring pack, you know, not, not as thick. So that's better, ultimately, is less, less friction that way. But that means I, I needed new rings. So I got new rings. I, okay, it's all in the parts pile there. So I got new rings, so I can start filing rings to fit that engine. Is what I thought until I got a phone call. From the machine shop, okay, right, Let, let's lay down the story yet again. For anyone who's been on, around the channel, this is like a broken record. Anyone new, this might, you know, this, this is the drama with this engine build. I need heads to put on this engine, okay? Now, I wanted to use these factory forged pistons. Right, because factory forge, nitrous build, you know, that's pistons I have, generously donated pistons. So I feel kind of obligated to, you know, use them because they're generous, generously donated, right? But there's a problem. The valve reliefs do not fit the 202 intake valves I have in the AFR heads, the AFR 165 Renegade heads that had the bigger valve put in, okay? These heads right here, you know, the, the AFRs, right? So that's a problem, right? I mean, valve reliefs, it, you kinda need those. Now there's two different solutions to this. You can either fly cut these pistons, which kinda weaken the actual piston itself because you're taking, you know, and in this case, it would be a significant amount of metal off of this piston. Uh, I mean, if it was just a little tiny bit, that'd be one thing, but these are dinky little valve reliefs. I would need to open it up quite wide to fit the 202 valve. Not only open it up quite wide, but I had to dig in deep because the bigger diameter valve would go deeper into the piston. So because of the amount I would have to do and I, I mean, I don't really want to do it by hand because then you're throwing off the whole balance of the rotating assembly. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's a pain. And I had to buy a tool. I mean, they have tools that you put in the head and then you assemble the whole block and then you drill into it into an undetermined amount that you'd have, to, I had to calculate up to see what I need and and it makes a giant mess everywhere and or I could just have a machine shop do it nope can't do it no machine shop in the whole because they a lot of machine shops just do I mean they just take the piston they put it on the middle and they open it up 
no machine shop around me minnesota i'm in the middle of minnesota no machine shop from top to bottom left to right to minnesota is willing to do this simple common procedure probably because it weakens the piston i don't know but opening up the valve pockets not really the option i wanted to go with so instead of using those heads i was going to just use stock style heads on this engine build because this was going to be the middle motor right uh not the all-out race one just you know the the middle of the road engine and you shoot some nitrous on it make it go fast right and then we would use those nice afr heads for the next build which i already have in my cranium but there's a problem with that too I had E7 heads that we ported, right? I took those to the machine shop thinking, okay, I'll get the valve job done on them just like I was going to. They'll whip it up and, you know, pay a couple hundred bucks and, you know, put those on the engine. No. Machine shop quoted me $800 plus dollars to get those heads runnable. It needs new valve guides. needs this machine down in order to fit the spring it's just the, the 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 price of the machine shops are ridiculous now so i thought okay i'll just jump on facebook marketplace see what i can find i picked up a pair of cylinder heads 289 heads right smaller combustion chamber uh, <clears throat> picked them up sent them to the same machine shop be like all right okay the uh, see see what these do right the guy said they're a fresh rebuild i mean they were cheap okay it, i paid like what was it 80 bucks for the two heads because and the guy looked like he needed the money you know let's just the guy looked like he needed the money so i figured well you know this is just a desperate guy trying to get rid of old race parts gotcha uh, said it was fresh from the machine shop. It looked pretty fresh, you know. The, I mean, the valves weren't, didn't even look like they had a runtime on them. Sent that to the machine shop. Be like, okay, these are supposedly fresh. They should be in better condition, right? So what, what do these need in order to get up and running? They quoted me $1,200 on those ones. I'm like, oh, so now. <laughs> So, so, so now, now we got issues. And I mean, the biggest bummer of all about all that is this camshaft, the Anderson N41 cam. I chose specifically because it works with stock pistons. That was the whole reason I went with this camshaft. Right? Yeah, that's a bummer. So, uh, what, what am I thinking? What, what, what are we going to do here, right? Because like I said, springs right out there. All that snow. And we gotta get this thing done, right? I'm not gonna keep doing the Facebook Marketplace, you know, iron head uh, Russian roulette here. I'm not gonna keep buying iron heads and hoping that they will be good enough to slap on here, right? Uh, because apparently machining costs are ridiculous and I don't want any part of that, right? Those heads in there, the AFRs, are ready to go. I just need to assemble, you know, uh, put the valve springs and the uh, valves and all that together and uh, install height and all that for the camshaft. So those heads are ready to go. So now I'm left with the pistons. The same thing that I have been left with for this entire time. And you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm gonna buy new pistons for the standard bore block I'm gonna buy some forge pistons the cheapest forge pistons that I can find which are uh, DSS diamond pistons I think they're summit racing they're like 409 bucks or something right I'm just gonna bite the bullet I'm gonna buy them and be done with it right that way we can use our nice heads and everything on here too I really didn't want to have to do that because it's kind of a chunk of change and it's gonna you know slow things down because I'm not made of money 
but it, it's it's better than trying to go through all this rigmarole. And actually, those pistons have a 564 ring pack, which I already had the rings for by Nick McMahon. See, I'm, I'm trying to use a, I will find something to do with those pistons. I just don't know what yet. But uh, th there we go, right? That's, that's the story with the engine build so far. Well, I mean, you know, tunnel ram, nitrous, headers, uh, uh, slicks, you know, that, that too, right? But th that's also all a part of the plan. And I need a 3000 stall converter. All of that stuff put together will be a pretty nice ride, right? It will be solid, right? So that's the update with the engine build so far. It's moving, it's got stuff in it, okay? But I, I need, I, I'm biting the bullet, I'm getting pistons. I, I, there's nothing else I can do. I couldn't get pistons for the stroker crank because those pistons are like 800 bucks and I ain't paying 800 bucks for piston. Okay, not doing it. I, I, I am not that ritzy of a guy. I, you know, I'm not that into speed to spend $800 on a set of pistons. The 400 is still like, ugh, but yeah, I'll deal with it, okay? And I can still use those pistons for the next build that I'm thinking of too. So, I mean, it will still, you know, it will be good. But once I get those, then I have to get them put on the rods. Again, I just got those pistons put on those rods and spent the money on that already too. So that's going to be great. I could just do it myself, mate. No, no, I'll fuck something up. I don't, don't need that in my life. All right. Once I get the pistons, well, I know which rings I need to gap now. I can still gap the rings while I wait for the pistons and all that. But once I get all that put together, then we're going to have a short block. Okay. And we will be well on our way to having the 302 engine build done for the Iron Horse. So until then, I'll catch you next time. There's your update. <sighs> oh, it's always, it's always something. Yeah, and, uh, well, cleaning parts also is part of that. There's the old timing chain cover. We'll just let that soak.